If you ask people about uh, what, what part of psychology do they think is hard, and you say, well, what about thinking and emotions? Most people will say emotions are terribly hard. They're uh, incredibly complex. They I can't, I have no idea of how they work. But thinking is really very straightforward. It's just sort of some kind of logical reasoning or something. Uh, but that's not the hard part. So here's a list of problems that come up. One nice problem is, what do we do about health? The other day, I was reading something, and the person said, probably the largest single cause of disease is handshaking in the West. And uh, there was a little study about people who don't handshake and comparing them with ones who do handshake. And I haven't the foggiest idea of where you find the ones that don't handshake, because they must be hiding. Uh, and that's. And, and the people who avoid that uh, have 30% less infectious disease or something. Or maybe it was 31 and a quarter percent. So uh, if you really want to solve the problem of epidemics and so forth, let's start with that. Uh, and since I got that idea, I've had to <laughs> shake hundreds of hands. And, and uh, I think the only way to avoid it is to have some horrible visible disease and then you don't have to explain. Uh, education. How do we improve education? Well, the single best way is uh, to get them to understand that what they're being told is a whole lot of nonsense. And then, of course, you have to do something about how to moderate that so that anybody can so that they'll listen to you. Pollution, energy shortage, environmental diversity, poverty. How do we make stable societies? Longevity. OK, there are lots of problems to worry about. Anyway, the question I think people should talk about, and it's absolutely taboo, is how many people should there be? And I think it should be about 100 million or maybe 500 million. And then notice that all of these, that a great many of these problems disappear. If you had 100 million people properly spread out, then uh, if there's some garbage, you throw it away, preferably where you can't see it and it will rot. Or you uh, throw it into the ocean and some fish will benefit from it. The problem is how many people should there be? And it's a sort of choice we have to make. Most people are about 60 inches high or more. And there's this cube law. So if you made them this big by using nanotechnology, I suppose. <laughs> Then you could have a thousand times as many. That would solve the problem, but I don't see anybody doing any research on making people smaller. Now, it's nice to reduce the population, but a lot of people want to have children. And there's one solution that's probably only a few years off. Uh, you know you have 46 chromosomes. and <laughs> If you're lucky, you've got 23 from each parent. Uh, sometimes you get an extra one or drop one out. but. Uh, so we could skip the grandparent and great-grandparent stage and go right to the great-great-grandparent. And you've got 46 people, and uh, you give them a scanner or whatever you need, and uh, they look at their chromosomes, and each of them says which one he likes best or she. Uh, no reason to have just two sexes anymore, either. Right? So each child has 46 parents, and I suppose you could let each group of 46 parents have 15 children. 